I know. I almost ran over you yesterday. Um. Not really. But you were on my street walking. Oh. So I was like, do you live right by me? I don't know. I don't know. Do you live in Yeah. <laughs> nope. Not here. Okay. I thought that was a prerequisite. Why? Yes. Yeah. Come on. Same. Oh, okay. I'm at the bottom of the corner. At the bottom of the hill. A big white house. The bottom of what? The bottom of the circle. On Oakmont. Oh, okay. The big white house with the ugly blue Jeep. That's my husband's Jeep. Yeah. I like that view. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I passed you yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And then I had to turn around and come back because my kid forgot his deodorant. And I'm like, nope. I'm back around. So I came back around and you were right in front of the house. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't know. I live on the other side. Sort of up drive. Go down Oak Mark, down the road, up the Mercedes. Okay. But I'm not in the park. Gotcha. Gotcha. So delivering his deodorant wasn't. For him, clearly. No. <laughs> Prepubescent boys are not fun to be around. Twins. Ooh. Yeah. How old are they? They're about to be 10. Oh, and they smell a lot. They smell. It doesn't get better. It, it no. doesn't get any better. No. <laughs> oh, no. Peyton smelled so bad there for a while. Just adolescent, Steve. Yeah. When she would go to cheer, she'd have her Uggs, and I would make her put them outside the car while we were inside. Because they smelled so bad, and I would just in out in the parking lot. And I was like, if somebody steals them, it's on them. It's fine. It's terrible. Bring a bottle of baby powder, right? Uh huh. Yeah. I think we threw some out on a road trip one time because we stunk up the car. Oh my god. Not lying. That girl had some stinky feet. That's terrible. Thank goodness she grew out of it. I would not think I was ever going to get her married off. I mean, she's still not married off, but. Pay somebody. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pay him hard because that was bad. She's. So Still a slob. We haven't ready? done that yet. Are we gonna ready? wait. Are we the stuff you're talking about. We don't know. Oh, it's seven oh one. It doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter. If she shows up, she shows up. All right. It is seven oh one, and I have present Wendy Bailey, Stacy Bauer, Patrick Shrine, Bob Ferguson, myself, and absent tonight is Tracy Hunter and Stephanie Presley. But we do have enough for four. And before we get started, do we have any public comments? None. That's easy. So now we want to move to our announcement and our reports, right, Tony? Yes, sir. So let's start with you. <laughs> Good evening, Park Board members. Thank you for your time this evening. I'll get started with an update on our parks in town and I did a little bit something a little bit different today and included the slides that I presented to our council for the parks master plan that way you all are updated and fully aware of what we are presenting to them and our future recommendations for the parks this will also tie into your last agenda item on your packet there as well so this is currently what Harmony Park looks like as you know, it's a soccer complex uh, with tennis courts, bocce ball courts, two playgrounds, restrooms, and concessions. Currently, our recommendations to our council is to expand the pavilion for private parties. It is a very busy area uh, at that park and heavily used. Uh, we want to construct, convert, dedicated pickleball courts, which you all know have been passed by our council and approved. Um, we. As you can see, the replacement of the monument sign also is in desperate need. It's currently in disrepair, and we will be demoing the structure of this monument shortly, within probably two to three weeks. Um, we added a, a design there of what the future monument may look like, and this is to be consistent with the rest of the park system as well. Is the bocce ball... I, I never see anybody playing it. Does, yes, does sir. it get any use at all? It does. It get there's a, a league that uh, plays there two seasons out of the year, and currently they have a, their season going on as at the as we speak. So they're there on Saturdays, I believe, at nine o'clock in the morning. Can you go back to the the picture? This one. So where's the which ones are the new pickleball courts? Yes, I'll show you. What's Right here. 
Okay, so, and where will a soccer, these are the soccer fields that you have lined up? I just want to make sure I have the right point of reference here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so this is what our current park looks like, and then with the new pickleball courts, they're right there, right adjacent to the existing tennis blue? courts. Is that the blue ones, okay. yes. Okay, wait. Okay, so none of the outside existing courts are changing. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So with this in mind, please keep, I wanted to mention we do, we are going to go back to our tennis courts uh, resurfacing for strictly tennis on our existing courts as well. So that's why it's a little bit fair for them too to have their own space and not all be pickleball courts out there. Okay. And how many courts are there going to be? Four. four. Four dedicated pickleball courts. They will be lit as well. Okay. Yep. And completely fenced off it. Okay. Moving on to Independence Park, this is what it currently looks like. After meeting with our team, we were our recommendation um, in the future would be to have something uh, more event uh, oriented. We kind of struggle sometimes with having our food trucks there and kind of forcing them to go in between trees or off to the side. Or if it rains, we have to worry about leaving ruts or maybe even canceling the event um, as well. As you all know, Fourth of July is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, event we have here in Trophy Club. So. Going to a plan B is definitely an option for us, but not ideal for the community that we have and the amount of attendance that we have. Last year, we received 7,000 people. One of the um, options to go to plan B, if we were to receive rain before an event, would be to hold the event here in the parking lot. Well, that's we just lost a bunch of parking. Right? That's over 300 parking spaces that we would lose. So our recommendation would be to potentially include some slabs here. If it does rain, we don't have to, we wouldn't have to cancel any of the events and place our food trucks here. A slab here with a more permanent structure for our bands would be ideal as well. Same concept when it rains, we have a little bit of a challenge with them jumping the curb and leaving ruts in the grass or even going to a plan B as well. So this is one of our recommendations for, for council in the future. Um, installing new batting cages at Independence Park East. We built those new ones at West last year uh, when we partnered with TCRYBA. And we would like to install new pick or um, batting cages right here would be ideal. And they would be also lit. So it would be convenient for the tournament users and, of course, for our TCRYBA Youth Sports Association. Would that be fenced off? Which one? Straight. So coming from the multi-use field, you can usually walk straight up into that pavilion area. So would that be fenced off if you're going to put batting cages there high enough up that if people are on the multi-use field? The batting cages themselves will be fenced off with the netting. However, uh, access to the, to the concession stand would be these walking paths right here on both sides. Okay. What's the football field? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that is, as you and I have discussed plenty of times, um, on days that this field, which was field four at Independence Park West, on days that it would not be used by our baseball association, uh, this is actually identifies turfed, synthetic turf fields. Well, I've seen there's some cities out there that uh, squeeze in a football field for extra practice um, on their baseball fields, and it doesn't damage their uh, fields uh, being that there would be synthetic turf. Is that a full football field or is that so, half? I believe it's half. Is that, I was going to say half. half. When Either is the plan for that? I'm sorry? When is the plan for the turf? What is it? When? That we don't know yet. That's why we are wanting to, that's why we did the um, item, the last item on the agenda to yeah, okay. kind of prioritize all of these. Because I know we, would, we tried that one year. How'd that work out? Ago. Well, before it was artificial turf. Well, yeah, we destroyed that baseball. Yeah. Yeah. It that, that didn't last long. a year to fix it. <laughs> it was yeah. not a good thing. Yeah, no. this only works if we were to have synthetic turf, yeah. not not real turf out there. So, okay. Moving on to the community pool. This is what it currently looks like. As you all know, we have our renovations uh, going as we speak. 
Uh, what we don't have that we will be discussing in the future is maybe some privacy fencing along the rod iron fence that on the perimeter of the of the pool. Um, repainting of the splash pad and the pool facility infrastructure. The paint that it currently has, it's the original one back from, I believe, 2003 when it was built. And of course, uh, replacing the monument sign as well. How's the inside, the chemical? Yes, sir. It's Thank you for asking. On track. Yes, I'll show you that in the second slide here coming up. Uh, wanted to t show you these uh, new splash pad features. This has been completed as of this week. Um, as you can see, they look completely brand new. Uh, I, I do need to brag a little bit about the significant cost savings uh, that we had here. Uh, this was a project that I believe will cost the town approximately 42, I believe, $1,000. Um, something like this, every single feature out there was uh, renovated and we're talking in hundreds of thousands of dollars to ship them out and then delays, right, or if they come back broken. Or, so there was a lot of inconvenience there for us to move that route, but they are complete. Um, so that's something we're extremely proud of and ready to go. Okay. Hey. Bob, to answer your question, this is the new uh, competition pump room. Uh, we do have circulating water now as of two weeks ago. The splash pad pump room is next. Uh, they haven't uh, started that yet, but this whole process uh, lasts about two weeks. So uh, please keep in mind, we are going to open on time. That's still on schedule. Um, Tim already hosted his first um, certification class at NISD. This next round is uh, we plan on having here at our pool facility. Okay, so this is what our new pump room looks like as of today. Moving on to Freedom Dog Park. We get a lot of requests out there, or phone calls, asking if we have any bigger pavilions in mind for the future. I added that picture there to uh, maybe give you a little bit of a visual and hopefully in the future recommend the council about putting a pavilion here for parties, uh, possibly a monument sign. Uh, currently, the park does not have a monument sign at all. Um, so please keep that in mind. Uh, we d would like to install lighting within the interior of the park as well. There's a lot of times, especially in the winter time, where the park is still open, and the dark and the park is completely dark inside inside the uh, area. So, uh, upgrade our parking lot lights as well, as they're kind of dim at the moment. Enhance grading uh, the existing flume, and we have an, a concrete flume in the back of the large dog dog side, where it holds a lot of water and maybe some mosquitoes and uh, breeding there. So we want to enhance that um, and connect the, the existing sidewalk. I don't know if you guys, Patrick, you're aware of that. Uh, we have a, uh, a piece of sidewalk that ends and then it has a drop right after that. So we want to maybe create a ramp there or something, but it is a safety concern that we will talk to the committee about in the future. Then our medians, uh, some recommendations that we have is to redesign and install new plant material, uh, especially on those medians that have the Bradford pears. As we all know, those Bradford pears are a little weak and always falling with the storms. They can be a little bit dangerous. Uh, install additional perennial plant material on median end tips to reduce color annuals as well. Um, and of course, there's some grant opportunities for, for uh, projects like this um, that we were going to try to do some research on, and that involves more artwork um, type of grants. So uh, depending on which way the Park Board Subcommittee wants to go, we'll make those recommendations to our council. Um, and then, of course, we have the enhancement of the main town entrance, which is currently in the works with town council and our town manager. Okay. And then moving on to Trophy Club Park. We have plenty of recommendations here. As you guys know, this is a almost uh, 1,000 acre park. We'd like to upgrade the, uh, the the park entrance. As you know, that it's not very appealing at all as we speak. So uh, definitely need some upgrading. Uh, design and install a new landscape botanical garden. We want to make our flower garden a little bit more um, 
appealing to our, our, our citizens and of course our patrons and host more parties out there. We did have one wedding there a few years ago, so we want to host a little bit more uh, um, parties like that and just kind of upgrade the whole the whole. Uh, Is the women's park. club so responsible for that? They are not. They have not been for several years. We started a partnership with them. Yeah. I sort of fizzled out a little bit, but that's not to say we can't definitely start something again like that in the future. I would say we take it over and just do it. Let's do um, it. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about that with the uh, Parks Improvements Committee. Absolutely. Where are you wanting to put the restrooms? The restrooms, I'll show you here, would be right back here where the events currently take place okay. by the... Uh, Boat ramp, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, we do want to talk about implementing overnight campgrounds. Primitive camping would be ideal at the moment to start off. Update all picnic areas with new shade shelters. Currently, we have four new ones out there, and those are towards the back of the park uh, on the north end. And construct a kayak ramp as well. So. These are some recommendations that we'll definitely be talking to in our meetings moving forward. I added this picture um, to give you guys an, uh, somewhat of an idea. This picture here on the right mimics what 2015 flood looked like, um, and, and then some. So uh, this gives you an idea. As you can see on the uh, elevation level averages there since four, 2014 to 2022, um, you have your minimum, max, and average um, level averages there. So we want to keep this or need to keep this all in mind when we're talking about upgrading the park, right? It's not a matter of if, but when it floods, okay? So we'll have to be extremely strategic about it and uh, make sure that we're upgrading where, where we need to. That's a great picture. Thank you. Yeah. That was uh, Mr. Daniel Wilson. Nice work. Actually, yes, sir. Absolutely. This is good because this is the flood line here. Since this is the road by area B parking, that's a very common occurrence. But the 2015 flood actually covered everything in green here. The only thing that wasn't flooded was the uh, in the restroom line. Right here, right, Tom? Yeah. South of this? Yeah. Um, the eight houses here. Right. That lake was closer to my house than that. Yeah. Um, I had waterfront poppy for a few weeks. Um, going back to the park, two things. This one here? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do we have a gate attendant yet? We posted t today. So that posted There's today. been consistent issues that people are trying to get in and can't, and yes. there's been a problem. Have we got a fix? Yes, we heard about that. Um, we had one this weekend as well. Yeah. We had staff out there within the hour to fix that, and we have staff this weekend, okay. uh, Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully we get it some good bites from the outside to apply, and yeah, we'll, we'll manage. And then do we have an update on getting new maps out? This is the new map, actually. Uh, Daniel put the finishing touches on it today. I met with Mr. Mills last week as well to help us out with some details, and he was very helpful. So with between both of them, we have, we have a finished product. Um, I'm going to provide some of these maps to Tim to put out at the guardhouse and uh, for folks to kind of grab as they go in as well. So as you notice, it has a QR code, too, that people can download on their phones as well. So In the little garden area by the guard shack, yes, are there restrooms there? There are restrooms near the guard shack, yes. Okay, so it need to be fixed. Well, I, I was thinking if 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 we're taking that over and women's club isn't really managing it anymore, we could really utilize and do more with that space and maybe rent it out, um, make it nicer, more appealing, and make some money off of it. But we would yes, have to have the right amenities there. I agree. Yes. But it's just sitting there doing nothing. Absolutely. And it, I mean. It was a cute project for them for a while, but let's do something with it. Absolutely. going to bring money to the town. Got it. Is the upgrade on the restrooms right there by the guard shack in all of this? It needs some 
They will be, okay. and I'll show you that slide here in a second. Okay. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> and here it is. Please keep in mind, none of this is um, to scale. That's what the new restrooms will look like, Stacy. Nice. Um, potential front entrance um, with some parking for equestrian trailers and trucks. We added the top right picture to give you an idea of what we want to do with the existing mountain bike trail and make it more advanced or create, possibly create another more advanced uh, trail um, for, for the public. So this is what the new park entrance would look like ideally. However, it's not engineered. We will have to hire an engineer and, and a firm to, to give us a, a drawing with some more specs. Okay. This is our existing boat ramp here on the top. And we would like to widen out a little bit to offer folks a little bit more breathing room, as you can see how narrow it is here. And we would like to add more parking here. And at the end of the day, our ultimate goal, what we would like to do is host more events out here. And that way we wouldn't have to uh, disrupt our, our existing park system, which would be Independence Park East, right? So there are grants available for all of this. So we would be researching as much as many grants as possible um, to help benefit the town, not be so cost effective. Okay. And then we added this last slide just to kind of give you an idea of what we um, host currently and what we would like to host in the future. Um, pickleball league tournaments, horseshoe league, something we don't have, flag football, I think that already exists. Uh, ultimate Frisbee League, you know, just different options and avenues for our youth out there. And for our senior program, we have walking clubs, skills and hobby classes, day trips, game days, etc. Don't forget that phase two of the pool renovations has a activity room. Currently, that'll be a 40 by 40 climate control, and we'll have definitely a lot of activities there for everyone. Okay. And that concludes my updates. Any questions? Why can't we do something? So with, um, I know it's the park, it's not a park. That open space where Sheldon and Abbott come together before you go into the park. It looks like it's been at least a month since the grass has been cut. So I don't know if there is a particular schedule that you're on to do that every other week or yes. it's getting pretty Appreciate. Yeah, this is, I spoke with the park superintendent today, Jorge, and he told me that this is the first week that they're going to, on a regular schedule for the summer. Okay. So after this week, Bob, uh, that particular area is mowed three to, uh, every three weeks. Okay. okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome, Tony. Thank you for presenting all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Lock My away. pleasure. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Daniel. Daniel. All right, I'm going to do your rec update today. Um, I haven't made up my mind whether it's going to be shorter or longer than Tony's, so cross our fingers. Hopefully short. No, That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start off with the community events. Uh, the last one we went through was our extravaganza. Uh, it took place on April 8th at Independence Park East. Uh, Tony counted 17,000 eggs exactly. Uh, we distributed that amongst the four age groups that we had. Uh, the Easter Bunny was there, available for photos. Uh, we want to thank Barra Church for their help in there. Uh, our sponsors are Fiber First and Lancey's Children's Dentistry, as well as our Parks Board and Town Council members that were able to make it out there. Tooth Fairy was there. Oh, yeah. Tooth Fairy was there. That's, <laughs> that's Lancey's girl. Yeah. She was there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coming up, our next event uh, is actually a curveball for y'all. Uh, April 28th, we are having an Arbor Day ceremony. Yeah. I know that's last minute for y'all, but uh, it's something we just decided to put together. Uh, it's going to be April 28th, like I mentioned, at Independence East at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. On a Friday morning? Mm -hmm. Just confirming? Yes, ma'am. Uh, in partnership with the Trophy Club Rotary, uh, we'd like to invite you guys out there uh, planting a tree we're looking forward in the future to make this a, a larger, more grandiose event. Uh, but for the time being, this is what we're looking at. Uh, coming up after that, very next day, again, you guys are invited, full weekend for you. 
uh, April 29th, we have our Taste of Trophy Club coming back for a second time. This event's going to be from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at again at Independence Park East. At the moment, we have nine local restaurants with a variety of cuisines, including barbecue from Meet You Anywhere and Tex-Mex from Anamias. Uh, beer and wine sales will be provided by Blue 22 Sports Grill. Uh, and then for the kiddos, we're going to have some live music, uh, or sorry, we're going to have live music for the full four hours, starting off with a group called Big City Outlaws and then moving on to a group called Party City. It's pretty cool. It's the same organization that does our Limelight 4th of July, the whole deal. Uh, and then for the kiddos, of course, bounce houses. Uh, there'll be lawn games and other activities for them to enjoy their time as well. Because it could be the same configuration as last year. I noticed the food trucks were kind of cramping the sidewalk to get up to the concession stand. So I don't know if we're going to be able to maybe spread them out a little bit. We are contemplating mimicking the 4th of July setup, which would be over to the side of the uh, Independence Park West by the, by the band oh. um, or by the residential area along that uh, fence line. Mm -hmm. So it does definitely keep uh, more breathing room up there. Yeah. So, yes, you are correct. People were running into each other, and the lines were not, <laughs> yeah. So the stage and the music would go in the same spot as July 4th? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So what, would it behoove us to make a strip of, a, of concrete that goes kind of follows along that for the trucks to park and it not tear up the grass and yada, yada, yada? It'd be nice to have a designated area, whether it's there, Wendy, or somewhere in the park, just for them to be able to that pull up. Set, that yeah. setup worked really well, but it's, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you're going to tear up the grass. And they exactly. Blah, blah, blah. And then we run into the risk of If it's canceling something we're going to do ongoing, then it might not be a bad idea. Though. Exactly. we we'll just get the bobcat from the park and pull them out of it. <laughs> Another option. Fix the grass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, we got a new, another new event coming on, our uh, POW MIA ceremony uh, is debuting on May 20th, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Veterans Memorial at Independence Park West. Uh, as you guys have been following along, you know that this is our unveiling of our new POW MIA monument that we had ordered and installed. Uh, at this event, we'll have guests that are joined by uh, former POW MIA veterans uh, as guest speakers that will be sharing their stories. In the same light, we're inviting uh, our community members that uh, are family members or veterans themselves of POW MIA uh, to visit our website and to reach out to us uh, in order to speak and share their stories. We're excited to hear them. What time is that? This is from uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. in Independence Park West, the Veterans Memorial. And then another first-time event here in Trophy Club, we have our summer celebration taking place on May 26th from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. Uh, at Independence Park East. This one we're super excited about. The In-N-Out Burger uh, cookout truck is going to be joining us, giving out free In-N-Out Burgers for the first 600 guests. So be there a little bit early. Um, we are also going to have a DJ and some yard games to help families stay entertained. And then at sundown, Around 8.30, we're going to start a presentation of the new uh, DreamWorks movie, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Uh, so we'll have a big 40-foot inflatable movie screen for an outdoor movie with their families. Cute. <laughs> um, and then the big one we're all thinking about and have on our minds, the 4th of July. So at the moment, 4th of July, the Patriot 5K and Fun Run registration is open on our Trophy Club website. It's the earliest we've ever opened it, and we're excited to see what those numbers will show. Uh, packet pickup is going to start on July 1st. Uh, tentatively, here at Town Hall, we're working on those details. Um, we invite our Trophy Club community, surrounding community, anyone and everyone who would like to walk, run, speed walk this, uh, we visit our website, www.trophyclub.org. To, uh, to register for that event. Um, of course, immediately following our 5K and Fun Run, we have our Parade of Patriots. Registration for that's going to open up on May 29th for organizations to throw their name in for that. And then lastly, we have our fireworks celebration. Uh, we've confirmed with Limelight, our group has been doing this for as long as I can remember. Uh, and they do an incredible job every year. They've agreed to come out and do the event again with us. We're going to have bounce houses, face painting, other activities for the kiddos. And then, of course, to, uh, to end the night, we'll have our, our fireworks show, shooting off 
roughly 9.30. That's our events update. You guys have any questions about events? Are you still doing the Memorial Day at Medlin? Yeah. Yes. All right. Move on to the rest of recreation. So uh, our summer programming, we open that up for residents on May 30th and non-residents on April 6th. Um, so it's open at the moment for everybody. That includes our summer adventure camp, which at the moment is completely sold out. We hit another record than 24 hours being opened. Most of all the classes were filled up. Mm -hmm. So we still encourage everybody to go out there and put their name on the waiting list. As soon as a uh, kiddo, we get word that they won't be able to make it, we'll drop it to the next person in that waiting list. So it's still worth put, taking the time to put your names in there. We, uh, in the same light, our swim lessons program is also still open for children of all ages and swimming levels, including uh, our parents, parent and toddler classes, as well as classes for kids three and up, where all those are open. Swim team registration is open as well. Uh, if new swimmers are looking to join us. Uh, we encourage them to sign up for our tryouts. Uh, for joining swimmers that are coming back to us are welcome to just go ahead and register for the team, pay the fee, and we will see them at our practice. And then lastly, uh, pool memberships are also open. So you can go ahead and grab your, your pool memberships for that uh, with your, your family memberships, offering up to five passes and your individual memberships. What are we charging these days? For family membership, it's $75 for up to five passes. And an individual membership, it's $25. Right, it doesn't change much. <laughs> Where are we at on Roanoke? people being able to buy a pass. So still at the moment, the Trophy Club pool is residents only. Non-residents are welcome with an accompanied Trophy Club resident. Okay, so as a parent of kids that used to hang at that pool, um, my daughter's best friend lives in Roanoke and mm -hmm. I don't wanna pay $6 a pop every time she wants her to come to the pool. So it would, be a nice gesture for there to be an opportunity for maybe you have to have a resident sponsor or something like that but it would be a, a good opportunity for um there to be able to get passes for their friends to come with them to play mm -hmm. and it not costing parents an arm and a leg yeah absolutely it's definitely something with these capital improvements and fee schedule for next year that we can take into consideration for. We had discussed this with our yes. former supervisor a few months ago, and he was going to put together numbers to show about the economic impact on the pool. I still want to put that out there, because before mm -hmm. we make a decision to move it to next year, we need to look at it for this year. Because mm -hmm. I don't know that the revenue is there for the town people. And if there's space to get people in, it would make sense to get them Yeah. In. Well, I know when the, my kids are older. So when Hawaiian Falls opened, that pool was a ghost town. Now, those of us that still had little kids thought that was fantastic. But from a revenue standpoint, it was not that great. Um, and, you know, everybody's got a pool, blah, blah, blah. But, but my bigger problem was my kid has a best friend and she's a cheerleader on little league and she lives at chadwick farms and i have to pay for her every time my kid invites her over to go and they want to go to the pool mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. as a parent i would be willing to buy her a pass to just not have to shell out six but or, or come up with six dollars in cash every time they want to go to the pool mm -hmm. um I, I think that's i mean i'm not saying necessarily open it up to everyone in roanoke but you might, you know, maybe a resident sponsor situation or something. I could see where that would be very beneficial to the parents of kids that live here. And it's something we can discuss as the parks uh, improvement subcommittee, right? Um, and let me remind you, we, we did bring this to council maybe about a year, year and a half ago, and it, it they didn't get too far, right? So that's something they weren't interested in at the time. Doesn't mean we can't bring it up in the future. So, um, let us do some homework first and, and come up with some fees and see what other cities and towns do first and then uh, maybe address this at one of our subcommittee or our first subcommittee meeting. Uh, or even, you know what would work as a mom is to be able to buy a guest pass for a rando. Like my kid has a kid spending the night. I have a guest pass that works for one person in addition to my four family members. Um, just be because of that kid 
demographic, not necessarily in a family of four, but, you know, I'm going to buy an extra pass for whatever kid comes with me sure. this week. Well, if, <laughs> have you been able to track the usage of the pool over the last couple of years? I mean, is it at 50% capacity, 75%, is it 80, is it, I mean, if it's 50, then why not in, so invite other people in? We discussed right. this because uh, we looked at a pre-COVID number. COVID obviously changed everything, correct? Sure. And then we were going to look at a post-COVID number, which would be last year, and just see what those numbers were. Because we had put out a pass for outside, then we said nobody outside, and we wanted to see the difference when they could and when they couldn't. Right. And I think it's worthy looking at the numbers. We may be really worried about something that's not an issue and, you know, whatever. Well, my, my thing is less about a revenue problem and more about a mommy problem. Well, I think you could. A convenience problem, too. Okay, yeah. so we're going to have a subcommittee. Yeah. I think one of the things that should be on that thing would be a family pass that includes option for two additional friends, yeah. whatever, whatever. It right. could be modified to that as simple as that, right? As right. long as they're with your daughter, she's in yeah. attendance, they could go with her. Yeah. That could be creative, but we could just discuss that and put it forward, right? Yeah, and don't forget, phase two of the pool is around is next season, right? And we did address um, the fees moving forward after the two-story slide is in place and everything at the party room and the, mm -hmm. the activity room. So we are going to bring new fees to council, and that would be the time to, to discuss that for sure. And Wendy's right. That happens more often than you think. Oh, well, I'm the I'm the mom. I can stop yeah, paying for have, all these random kids. I'm yeah. like, your friends have friends. They don't yeah, always. Yeah, they don't want to go by themselves. Because yeah. they, they go to somebody. school at Medlin, and half of Medlin uh -huh. lives in Roanoke. Right? Yep. So, Are there yeah. cheerleaders on the same baseball yeah. team? Whatever, whatever. Well, we can put on the subcommittee meeting. I mean, I think it's a very important thing to address. It but is. I think we should address it sooner than later. That's I, well, at least that. I mean, like, I get like inviting the whole world. To, that's a whole different bag. But this is just a more another convenience for our town members that want to well LA fitness not to speak of something a business but I know they have a deal where if you're a member there mm -hmm. someone can go with you there's no charge as long as you're there Sweet. we could modify our past where your friend can go with you as long as the person that lives here is there yeah it'd be as simple as that right mm -hmm. yeah no all these they're great opinions and everything that we definitely want to talk about and move forward with best place for that's going to be in that uh that subcommittee we're going to call for at the end of this Last action today. Right, you know, up, um, going back to your <laughs> one, are we short? <laughs> I'm in. Going back to your adventure camp. How are you on employees? Do we have applications out for people? Yeah. So uh, that's actually my next point: is our, our seasonal hiring. Uh, it's been very well. Uh, we've been. Tony mentioned earlier, our lifeguards have already undergone one training session. Uh, at the moment, I believe we have roughly 25 lifeguards hired, which is about how many lifeguards we had in total last year. So. We're off to a good start, really, so far. With summer camp employees, we are just about full, okay. um, getting to the point where we can kind of start to compare. So we're excited about that. We are still looking for uh, assistant summer camp position, assistant summer camp director position. So if you have anyone you would know who would be good for that, feel free to send them our way. Is our pay scale adjusted from last year, or are we still? Pay scale has been adjusted for last year, and those numbers have been finalized. Uh, our human resource department, Denise, did a pay comp study. That included all of our seasonal staff. All staff is receiving those those new rates this year. Okay. Um, on the, yeah. Well, I just hit my seasonal one. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the last one, or two last things here. Firstly, uh, our CAPRA subcommittee. Uh, we met, uh, Stacy, Stephanie, Tony, and myself, uh, met March 30th uh, with that. Uh, and we decided where we wanted to take things from there. Uh, at the moment, there's not a scheduled meeting going in the future, but we're getting to there. Uh, there's been a lot of change and some other priorities within the town and our department that while we're not letting this take a back seat, we need to focus our attention more to. So we're, we're, working, we're working towards our capper still, but we are taking some strides elsewhere as well. And then the last one is an item from you guys that you had requested uh, that we wanted to put together is a uh, fee comparison chart, not to draw this back to what we were just discussing. <laughs> I do want to mention as we uh, uh, present this to you that it is comparing apples to oranges. Obviously, not everyone has the exact same pool as us or demographics. So uh, some of these pools, uh, like the South Lake or Flower Mound pool, run year-round. 
they have indoor and outdoor facilities. They have much larger slide systems and whatnot that we don't. So we are again looking at these fees, uh, especially with the upcoming CIP project. You guys, as you guys know, with the new facilities going in, with our new amenities like our uh, speed slides that are going in, we're definitely going to reevaluate those fees next year and uh, adjust them if needed. So that resident guest pass, that is exactly what we were talking about. So we already have it. The resident guest pass is a little bit different. It's the free pass that you said for residents only. It's not. Oh. Yeah, so they can just So that's it. just an individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we need to change that wording. It's confusing. Yeah, it is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. Boy, they stick a tea in Plano, don't they? Or a flower mound, 500. Some of these are also be pretty uh, serious they... about your pooling and flower mound. <laughs> Everybody in Flower Mound has a pool. They're crazy. Wow. All right, I don't know about Flower Mound. I know South Lake, this includes their uh, recreation center as well. Oh. They Maybe don't do separate Flower Mound Mus. That seems like a number, though. You want to talk about a recreation center? <laughs> uh, I don't. No. No? Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Awesome. Are there any other questions from the rec side of things? Yeah. When are we getting a rec center? Tony. <laughs> <laughs> There's some nice land right out here. Just we have it all worked out. I can draw it up real quick. <laughs> Senior center? Rec center? All right. Are we done with all of our announcements and reports? Right, so that concludes that section of our agenda. Now I'd like to move to regular session. And our first agenda item is to discuss the minutes from February 27th. Has anybody had a chance to see those? Yes. I need a motion to approve. Stacy Power, our second. I second. Bob Ferguson seconded. All in favor? Motion passed. Accept the minutes. The next item is something that Tony alluded to a little bit earlier. I know we're going to have our first ceremony, um, but we want to make it an annual event. So, That's Tony, correct. why do you tell us about that? That's correct. So, in collaboration with the Metroport Veterans Association, uh, we met with them uh, approximately two weeks ago, and we were just uh, very delighted about having this opportunity and honored to have this opportunity to host this uh, ceremony. Enough to, uh, I made the recommendation to maybe host this on an annual uh, basis. And to be able to do that, it would be the third Friday of September of each year. We would have it out at Veterans Memorial at Independence Park West. We do have all the supplies in house to be able to accommodate this ceremony. Um, and this is obviously uh, to honor those who were prisoners of war and those who were still missing in action. So um, wanted y'all's approval and uh, or questions or concerns that you may have, but this is something we like to implement to our activities and programs and events schedule for, for our parks and recreation team moving forward. Tony, is it there's something significant about that date annually or it's that's what is uh, they have it it's actually called POW MIA recognition day uh, and it's nationwide um, I don't know the exact history behind the date apologize but it's an that's the day around America yes we should follow that probably right? yeah, yeah probably so. so all right so we need a motion to approve uh, creating the mm. POW MIA Day, correct? Implementing it Implementing to our, our Stacy Bauer motions seconded by Mr. Shrine, Patrick Shrine. All in favor? Motion is approved. Thank okay. you. Okay, the next item. A few years ago, um, we created the Parks Improvement Subcommittee, and that was uh, Tiffany Nymphius. I think Mindy Bone was on that. There was, and then obviously, time time and space that went away. But I think that it's important to recreate the subcommittee and have it because I think it helps Tony and his team plan to prioritize all of the things that they want to do. Um, we saw a lot of things tonight that need to be done, but we got to put them in some kind of an order, create budgets, action plans, and all that stuff. And it's a lot of work. And I think the subcommittee could kind of sort them all out, put them in an order, and then bring it to the park board, and then we could kind of discuss and give him a little guidance to help him and his team move forward. So mm -hmm. do we need to create a motion A to create the subcommittee because it no longer exists, correct? Correct. 
so I need to make, I make a motion that we create a subcommittee for parks programs. And I need, we don't have everybody here, but I know you want to be on it, right? <laughs> and I know you want to be on it, you probably shouldn't be on it. Can't yes. she can't. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Patrick would like to be, you want to be on the subcommittee as well? I was making a motion. No, no, no. We got to have already people. already made the motion. The motion, the motion goes Don't through. leave me hanging. The motion. Wait, wait, no, sorry. Up, yeah. The motion, the people on it is part of the motion. So, okay. You want to be on it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bob? Sure. Bob wants to be on it. Perfect. I'm and sure Stephanie would, but I can't speak for her, but she does like to be involved. Well, we can always add it. people to it. Like, yeah. Well, whatever you vote for today would be three. We can't have more than three. Oh, I didn't know that. Three. Okay. Let's do with that. Yep. All right. So, I make a motion that we have a, we create the sub, the parks project subcommittee with Wendy Bailey, Bob Ferguson, and Patrick Shrine on the committee. All in favor? Oh wait, I motion, who seconds it? I got you. Stacy seconds it, all in favor? All right, we have one. Thank you. So y'all have to figure out when we're gonna have your meeting. And then hopefully by the time we have our next parks board meeting, we have at least everything solved, but at least an order of things we wanna talk about. Yeah, what I plan on doing, Wendy, Patrick, Bob, is to meet on the months that we don't have a park board meeting, and that way we can bring an update to the park board on the following month. So if that's okay with you guys, I will email you guys as a group and, and go from there. So, right. Thank you so much. And just for the record, I think it's really, really important to have that because some of these projects look like they're pretty intense, right? Well, they're big and there's a lot of them, so we have to figure out yeah, what's going to be the most important. it's going to be a lot of exposure to the community. Well, you want, to maintain, of you want to maintain the park's integrity. So have the subcommittee, take it to the parks board, clear that so that then Tony can take it to council, and you maintain that integrity within the board. And the one thing I learned since I've been doing this for a few years, the more information you have when you get in front of council, the greater your chance of getting it approved. They're not much about spitballing during council meetings about costs and dates and plans. They like to see the whole bundled package. Well, and you have to have somebody that lives here that's been living here that can tell you, you know, from my experience, this is why we need this, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. I've been in the system. We could abuse this when my kids were little, blah, 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 blah. Um, that helps, too. You have to show them why. Not that they don't know, but show them why the, what you're wanting to do is a good idea and how it's going to benefit. And current kids on the front lines. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, my, my ships have sailed, but I was in the Pioneer Woman back in the yeah. day when you didn't have nothing. Oh, so. I'm in the mess now. So. Yeah. Gotcha. There you go. All right. So we're in. All right. So at this time, we have something very important to do. We are losing one of our members. And I think Tony wanted to say something. Or yes, was, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well. As you and I spoke this er earlier today, we talked about uh, this being your last meeting on the park board. Uh, I feel like I've seen you grow, and since I first met you, maybe two years ago, it's been longer than uh, that. It was a two. Yes. Yeah, it's been longer. Well, it was it was our first meeting uh, with the Bobcat Football Youth Association, discussing agreements, mm -hmm. arguing about the agreements. Me. Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, followed by, you know, I called you just one time to ask you about TCPRVA, and without hesitation, you jumped all over that and took off. So I cannot appreciate your dedication there. From TCPRVA, you went on to Parks Board. From Parks Board, you're moving on to Council. So I congratulate the town on having someone like you uh, with so much dedication. Thank you for everything you've done for us and, and, and everything you continue to do. And appreciate your dedication and support with our department. And you're always there at our Parks and Rec tent, uh, handing out promotional items and whatnot. So uh, you will be missed. And uh, oh, I'll still be. So there. We'll, we'll still. Well, I'll yeah, still I'll still be. see you. Yeah, I'll still be there. <laughs> so, but no, thank you so much for everything you have, and or I'm sorry, everything you have done for us. And I uh, could not uh, appreciate it anymore. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, you have my support. Thank you, ma'am. So thank I'd like to much. add to that. Uh, Obviously, uh, one thing about Stacy, everything she touches gets better. And she has a lot of input and gives a lot of direction. She's super intelligent and uh, dedicated and motivated and all those things. All those and uh, I can't imagine uh, that not continuing on when she gets to city town council. So I'll I say city. 
town council. I corrected myself. <laughs> yeah, I would expect that she will help improve town council as well when she gets there. And it's going to be nice to have a friend on council too that understands the park board. Absolutely. And the thing, the challenges that we have, and it's the parks and all that. So he will have a parks will have a voice. Yeah, that's good to know. Parks have a voice. So uh, they created a nice little certificate oh for you, God, you suitable ready. for framing, Mr. Bauer. <laughs> I expect to see this over the kitchen table. Yeah, put on the wall. Uh, oh my God, and right. that's her family back there, by the way, full support. Yes. So oh, it's good to so see. Sweet. So anyhow, we want to thank you, right? Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. And we do have some refreshments after the meeting, so we can hang out. I oh. baked those cookies myself oh, and brought them over. Oh, he did not. <laughs> one, one, thing, one, one thing I want to say, too, is one thing I really like and appreciate and respect about this team is the ability to plan and perform at a very, very high level, but then when needed, get down in the weeds and serve hot dogs and, and be out there. And, and Stacey, you, you are leading the parade with that. Yeah, so thank right. you so much. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a blast. Yeah. Can't wait to keep doing it. Absolutely. You, will, you can't get rid of me. You will, be, you will be missed on the back. I endorse your new capacity. Thank you. I do, too. Well, we need to find me a good replacement, so. We will. Well, we won't. But we'll, we'll do our best. That's right. Okay. Uh, we should probably talk about our next meeting, correct? So, uh, May. I think it may be in June. Okay. Are we skipping May, and we're going to go straight to we'll June? We'll go to June. Okay. Yes, sir. So, the June 19th, my birthday. Juneteenth. Not a good day. No. <laughs> I'm actually gone that day. It's a holiday, though. Juneteenth is a holiday. We probably shouldn't have it on Juneteenth. And I'm not just saying because it's my day, but it yeah, is a I'm holiday. gone that day. So with the 26th, make uh, sense, or the 12th. Uh, if we can do the 12th with the 26th, a little bit too close to the fourth. All right, so let's do the 12th. Does the okay. 12th work for you, late? Well, yes. for you, but sure, for you? Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Works for Bob's. That work for you to twelve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So I June 12th, let's make it June twelfth. What are we doing on June twelfth? It gives us a little time to discuss some of those other. Get the subcommittee to have put their stuff together too. Um, <coughs> All right. Do we have any uh, new agenda items for the next meeting? I know we're going to just well we'll discuss. We We'll have some um, from our meetings okay. of the subcommittee yeah, and then sure. CAPRA well, and, and whatnot. Um, oh, yeah, CAPRA. So we'll definitely do that. Oh, okay. Do we have plans to get a CAPRA meeting together before May 17th? Not at the moment. We can talk about it, though. Maybe we should talk. Okay. <laughs> what the heck's going on? Oh, that wasn't a question, right? No. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so uh, before we close, I would like to say that um, very, very important for everybody to get out and vote. This is recorded, so I'm just going on record that uh, the best thing you can do for your town is to vote and put the right people in there and get your voice out there. You can't complain unless you vote, so you got to vote. I wish that was a real rule. That was, uh, yeah. Daniel, can that be vote. a town rule? <laughs> can we implement right. that? Are you old enough? Oh. <laughs> I know the boys want to vote, but they're not ready. But some, you can vote at home. That's right. All right. I'm sure I'll be seeing you standing out there on on, on election day with your mom. So that'd be great. All right. So if we don't have anything else to discuss, I move that we adjourn a meeting at 7:52. I second it. All right. Huh? Lose our meeting. All right. Yay. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Easy peasy. All right. Do what?